This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, they have world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, and it's fresh roasted after your order. No longer do you need to go to a grocery store and find some of that pre packaged um, BS yeah. that, that you could, yeah. that you would find in the, in the grocery store, you get, you get fresh roasted coffee delivered to your door in days, in days. Um, what, what kind of products do they have? Any, anything under the, under the, uh, rainbow here, they got the fierce. It's a dark roast. Especially coffee. appropriate for the unicorn. Yes, in the unicorn. I, I was getting there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you have the fierce, which is a dark roast coffee made of um, Arabian. Apologize <laughs> of one hundred percent beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay the day. The ride and die. It's a medium. Um, it's a it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with superb smoothness and flavor. Or you can go with the Thor. It's a medium dark. And they say on here, it's thunder and lightning that will course through your veins. Or the unicorn, as Jared so um, decided to go ahead and interrupt me with the unicorn. Never. You're not going to know what it is. You. They're going to surprise you what it is. So if you, if you're, if you enjoy dare coffee, you suggest I interrupt you. <laughs> if you enjoy coffee, dark, medium, medium light, go with the unicorn. You'll be surprised once you open it. Be sure to check those and much, much more over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloop Guys also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is also an Ohio-based, family-owned, I already said Ohio-based, friendly-owned, uh, friendly business. I lost it. Man, I, 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 I said that like I was going to keep going. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, we actually got to know the good folks over at Iron Bean through the Mad Canadian. In fact, the coffee in Q, which is one of my favorite uh, spices that the Mad Canadian offers, is actually flavored with the Iron Bean uh, cast iron coffee. And it, it so it's not like a, a coffee flavoring or coffee inspired or co you know, no actual coffee in that coffee in queue. Uh, I like to put it on a pot roast. I like to put it on a steak. I like to put it on a hamburger. Uh, you're probably going to want to, if you're caffeine sensitive, some people are, some people aren't. If you're caffeine sensitive, you're probably going to want to uh, make sure you're eating that nice and early. It's a good like lunchtime hamburger thing. Uh, or it's also great if you're going to like be up all night drinking. So I think that's, that's also a great use case for the coffee in queue. What else do you have here? Uh, since we're talking beef, we can't not talk about the carry steak. Uh, it's a beautiful steak mix. You just simply can't go wrong with it. Uh, it does not stop at steak. However, once again, great on a pot roast, great on hamburgers. I've probably used the carry steak on hamburger more than anything else. So that's, that's another great one to go to if you're looking for a beef, uh, as is the old fashioned, which is based on the bourbon based cocktail. So that's another great one. It's bourbon, it's cherry, it's it's really outstanding. So he's got that and a bunch more that I'll bring up in the in the next ad read. But you can find all of his amazing spices over at the Iron Oop, I almost said the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company dot com. Uh, use promo code Sloopcast ten at Sloopcast one zero at checkout to get ten percent off your entire order. It's Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butts covered. We got a endorsement down in the live chat, which is still doing the thing where it's messing up, not loading people's names. I don't know why it's doing that. If I refresh it, it's fine. And there we go. Uh, Nomad says, Little Nomad and Nomad Junior destroy the carry stick. I mean, how would you not? Okay, it is genuinely. Uh, I mean, I know the Mad Canadian does, in fact, pay us, as does. Uh, iron bean coffee like actual money like they're sponsors they pay us actual money to do the ad reads however uh like with wolf's ridge uh who sponsored the podcast for a while i, st I still drink it <laughs> if mad canadian never had to stop sponsoring i'd still buy his stuff same with iron bean coffee they're great products and i'm not just saying that because we advertise for them 
They, they paid for that first part. They're not paying for this. This is just me being real with y'all. I am a kiss ass. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but once I, 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 I just, I just plugged Wolf's Ridge and they're not currently paying us. So am I kissing ass? Maybe I am. Hey, if you guys ever want to, if anyone from Wolf's Ridge is watching, come on back. We got room. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it, Jared. Yep. Thirsty for beer, Stuart. Thirsty for beer. Although I'm currently drinking a land grant for what that's worth. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you today, Jared? I have no complaints. Well, I mean, I have one complaint. But even though Ohio State lost, I thought they looked really dang good. Uh, we're recording this much later on a Sunday than we normally would. But uh, we have, uh, we had a basketball game to watch. We had four straight days to watch basketball. Yeah. Um, and that fourth straight day, I think, was was weighing on Ohio State a bit. But I think, uh, let's talk about the other games first, uh, and then we'll work our way over to Illinois. Yep. As I just said, Ohio State Four games in four days here, starting us off uh, playing Minnesota in the second round. And it was a lot closer than we were hoping it would be, but they still pull off the victory 79 to 75 in that game. Uh, it was all Ohio State for a while. Um, and then Minnesota did a great job with a full court press at the end to... Mm-hmm to shrink the lead. They made it a game when it really, really realistically shouldn't have been. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was three and a half minutes left in the game and Ohio state was up by 14, three and I'll, a half I'll do you better, up by 14. And, and it just got close. They got, they got within one point there. Kyle, I'll do you one better. Ohio state was up by nine with one minute left. Yes. It was just really, it was just a really great, execution of a half court half court press by Minnesota to make that a lot closer than it should have been. Ohio state really had a great lead for a while. It shouldn't have yeah, sloppy turn as nomad says sloppy turnovers for sure. I mean, 15 for that game. Yeah. It was very sloppy towards the down the stretch there, but I mean, a victory is a victory in the big 10 tournament here. Yep. And then moving on to the next game, tough, Tough game here. Uh, I believe Ohio State lost both times to Purdue, I believe, or one or two times. I forget how many times they played them, but each of these teams that Ohio State played, they lost to during during the regular season. I believe they were 0-2 versus Purdue. I believe that is correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And they get get a a great win. Um, They... Shouldn't have it shouldn't have gone in (laughs) overtime, but here here we are. It did go in overtime, and Ohio State just throttled through in overtime there to beat the Boilermakers 87 to 78. Yeah. Uh, Purdue tied the game up with, I believe just, uh, just under a minute left. And mm. to that point, Ohio state, I believe led outside of like the first minute or two of the game. I think Purdue was up like five to three or four. I forget. Uh, yeah. I mean, at the very you- beginning, but then Ohio State exploded and was was up by as much as I I think if I'm looking at this correctly the max was about 18 points and I get outside the first couple minutes of the game Ohio well outside of the first couple minutes of regulation and the last couple of minutes of regulation Ohio State completely dominated the game. I mean look at this it, under five and a half minutes left Ohio State was up 70. 70 to 61. Yeah. The game ended at 72 to 72. So in the final five and a half regulation, they scored two points and that two points came with 24 seconds left in the, in the game in regular in regulation. Yeah. Uh, Ohio state uh, really developed a tendency in this game or in, excuse me, in this tournament to, start off strong and, and, and finish terribly. <laughs> um, they started off strong against Minnesota. They started off strong against Purdue. They started off strong against Michigan. And in each case, they, they let those teams back in. 
Yep. Well, going going to the semifinal game, Ohio State defeats that team up north, sixty eight to sixty seven in regulation. <laughs> yeah. Now this game was this game was never a blowout by any means. Ohio State did start strong. Uh, they they and, had. And he, Yep, and here we go again. Ohio State. It was sixty-seven fifty-six with um with just over three minutes left. And Ohio State only scores one point in that final three minutes, three minutes and twenty seconds. And I believe that was a free throw. Well, I mean, it would have, it to, be. to, have it would have to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, that was dumb. Uh, the. The point I was trying to make is is that they didn't make any field goals. They didn't. The, the only way they scored, and okay, of course, if you only score one point, it has to be at the free throw. Throw. Okay, that was a real yes. stupid thing to say. Thank Good you, job, Stuart. Jerry. But my the point I was trying to emphasize there was that they didn't make anything from the field. They mm-hmm. only scored from the charity stripe in the last minutes of the game. Yep. Uh, Duncan wants us to wants us to know. How many times can we just can we say just like football in this episode? Uh, just like uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know Ohio State. I don't think this is just like football because Michigan was actually in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michigan still is going on to be a number one seed, more more better than Ohio by a spot. That's what. What are you gonna do? Uh, Michigan, Michigan basketball isn't Michigan football. They're still relevant. So it's not just like football, but it's still really nice to end their, not that this is necessarily regular season, but you know what I mean? Just to end their Big Ten hopes, you know, to end the Big Ten season on a down note. And that's what Ohio State does to Michigan. So that's just like football. So we got that just like football. Mm-hmm. And then Ohio State, by the way, I think this is one of Ohio State's best games. Why? 54.5% from behind the arc. Said it before, say it again. Ohio State has to shoot well to win games. Mm-hmm. You you can't give up size the way Ohio State gives up size against other Big Ten teams. Because they do. Look at the amazing big men that Ohio State has has had to play in the Big Ten this year. Every team along the way, it feels like amazing big men. Coburn, mm-hmm. Ohio State didn't have an answer for Coburn except to maybe get him to. Yeah, I, I realized I said that, Stuart. I was hoping no one noticed. Uh, the Coburn, they just didn't have an answer other than to maybe get him into foul trouble, which EJ e. Liddell did a good job of, forced some fouls, and EJ Liddell did not have a, a good game in. Uh, you know, against Illinois, but you know, we're, we're not quite there yet, Mm -hmm. but yeah, again, another incredible big man at Michigan and Ohio state did some good things. Three points did some bad things with the turnovers. Uh, It's, it's all for Ohio state. They don't have big men down deep. They have a tendency to turn the ball over. And if they go cold behind the arc, they're in trouble. And, Mm -hmm. That's just been the case all year. Yep. You you can't manufacture a center out of nowhere. Yeah. And then Ohio State, Ohio State took on Illinois for the Big Ten tournament championship. And just like their previous two games with Purdue and Michigan, had to go up against a really big and very physical center. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State took, took them into overtime, which – Man, look at that start of that game down by, what is that, as much as 17 points? Yeah. And they they brought it in and um, um, had, a chan- had a chance to possibly win it in regulation there. But, man, you you bring you bring Illinois to overtime and you you had chances there down the road, down the end of the road there. But Illinois just just proved to just be um, just had a better overtime there. And I think a couple of critical turnovers as well for Ohio state. I think there was a time Ohio state was down by two points and then had a turnover, Illinois capitalized and then back to back turnovers again, Illinois um, t- 
took advantage of that as well. And that, that's hard. That's hard to come back when you're down by six with like minute and a half left. That's, that's tough to come back. I, I think it was a great game. Honestly, um, Ohio state played like complete hell, except for like the last few minutes of the first half, the entire first mm-hmm. half. Yeah. And they did, I think, a great job to go into half down down by five at halftime. Is that correct, Kyle? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Buckeye Zach says in our live chat just now, um, you know, just blame EJ down the stretch. And I I feel like Buckeye Zach, I know him well enough to know he's at least somewhat kidding. Um, but there, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I took brief stints over into. Uh, the Twitter verse during the game hung out almost exclusively in the discord, but took some brief trips over to the Twitter verse and people were killing EJ Liddell. Just, 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 went, yeah, he went, he went three for 16, 12 points for the game over seven behind the three point line. Yeah. And not, not going to say that's good by any means, but he did a lot of good things. You know, mm-hmm. Ohio, one of the reasons why Ohio state was able to get back into this. Yeah. Twitter is super toxic. Uh, one of the reasons Ohio State was able to get back into this game was because of the foul trouble that Coburn got into. And who was forcing those fouls, by and large? E.J. Liddell. E.J. Liddell was incredibly tired on the offensive side. He didn't. Ha- he just didn't have it. It's a product of playing this many games. It's a product of him being, because, you know, we've gone this far in without saying Kyle Young's name yet. Kyle Young had the half, had had the game of his career at Ohio State in one half against Purdue. And then we didn't see him in the tournament again after that due to a concussion. And that put a lot of the defending the big man burden on EJ Liddell. You go up against a bunch of big guys, <laughs> not blaming Kyle Young. You go up against a bunch of big guys day after day after day. Then you have to defend Coburn. And I like Zed Key. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I like Zed Key. I like him more for what he'll be in the future than what he is currently. Um, Buckeye Zach says, blame the elbow. I, I don't know how much. I mean, I don't feel like a funny bone sticks around. I, I don't know how much that would have been affecting him in the Illinois game. But just overall fatigue. Having, you know, not having Kyle Young in there, I think, put a lot of the defensive burden on EJ Liddell through the latter half of this tournament. And Absolutely. That- Especially when you- Especially when you're going up against a seven foot, two hundred and eighty five oh, pound kid. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's that's tough. That's seven foot two hundred and eighty five Jamaican coming right at you on both side on both sides of the court there. That's that that's tough. And, and how many how many minutes did he play? He played thirty seven minutes against Illinois. Yeah, I mean he, he did look tired out there, but I mean for for how much he had to had to fight and how many minutes he had to put up in the previous three games to make up for, for Kyle Young being out. I mean, overall, yeah, I thought he did well. He, he didn't have great shooting as we mentioned about against Illinois, but I mean, got to take in consideration of the minutes he's played to get him some rest, some much needed rest here and see, see how, how state and Liddell do in tournament time. Yeah. I, you certainly, you know, Ohio State is, I think the current phrase coming out of Ohio State is hoping. Hoping to have Kyle Young back for the actual tournament. We'll see. And mm. hopefully, Ohio State does not need him. Maybe if he can't play the first weekend of the tournament. Ohio State, I would like to think, can get through that first weekend with relative, I don't want to say ease. I don't want to use the word ease, but I think Ohio State should uh, be able to to do that. I, is this what is this bracket I'm looking at? I don't think this is correct. I think this is a bad. Yeah, no, no, this is right. Uh, Ohio State is um, number two in the West. 
they are going up against, uh, that is a, for anyone playing at home, that's Gonzaga's bracket. So you want to get into the final four, got to beat Gonzaga. Is that, and, and, no, what is, what is this? This is not right. This is not, this is not a good bracket I'm looking at. Because that's, that's, that's incorrect. They're in the South against Baylor. Um, crap. That's a bad bracket. Kyle, we need a good bracket. That uh, was my fault. I put that in there. I just put it in there, assuming it was correct, and it. Right, I go. didn't really right. look at it until now. Here go, oh. Jared, coming at you right there. Oh, don't know if you can read that. Yep, that's perfect. Oh, actually, that's that's incredibly small, but we'll figure it out. All right. So, well, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State plays um, Oral Roberts in the first in the first matchup, and then they're in the south south with Baylor. Um, how state would be playing the winner of Florida and Virginia Tech. And to be honest, like looking at these um this bracket here, I really like Ohio State's um Ohio State's chances here. I think they got a very good uh I, I, think, I think they, they have, have a I don't want to say again, I don't want to say easy. I think they have oh, that's a much better one. Thank you. Uh that, that one says prediction though. Kyle, that, that one says prediction. <laughs> Go control right, Z, Kyle. On. Control Z. Apologize. I'm, I'm trying to find. Did I mention we're there. recording this right after the end of the uh, selection show? Just, just can you can you control Z your way back to the to the good bracket, even if the font was too small? Yep, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Give me one. Uh, but second. what I was saying is, I think Ohio State has a very winnable path to the elite eight. Uh, you know, obviously you're ultimately going to have to play Baylor to get into the final four. And I think that's the question. Um, can Ohio state make the final four this year? I think that's the question. I think we're all asking right now. Uh, if they do, they presumably would be playing Illinois again. <laughs> uh, Cause that, that's the, that would be the semifinals. That's uh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, having having to play, having to play Illinois, should it actually get that far? Uh, Baylor, however, is an excellent basketball team. Should Ohio State make it that far? Baylor is an excellent basketball team. Uh, that being said, I don't think they're as battle tested as Ohio State. One of the things we were so worried about with the Ohio State football team going into the playoffs was that they weren't battle tested. They didn't play that many games. They didn't play that many good teams. We knew the Ohio state football team was talented, but like, did they have enough time to work through their issues? Did they have enough time to improve? Did they have, did they play enough games? And of course they go on, they beat Clemson and then uh, Bama happens. So I, the football team is the football team. The basketball team, however, uh, you need the exact, it's the exact opposite thing where Ohio State's battle tested up and down and left and right. There is no one more battle tested than a Big Ten basketball team right now. No one's more battle tested than Ohio State and Illinois and, and Michigan and Iowa. No one's more battle tested. Now, that being said, you on the exact op, they're not fresh. One thing you said about Ohio State going into Clemson, well, at least they're fresh, at least they're healthy. And Ohio State's neither of those things from a basketball perspective. It's almost kind of like the complete opposite of football. Yeah, uh, that, that's 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 what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go, Jared. So with Ohio State's with Ohio State's uh, bracket that they're in here, I. I really like their chances. Like, like I mentioned, they play the winner. If they beat Oral Roberts, they, they play the winner, Florida and Virginia tech. I, and they're in their bracket there in their region, their toughest matchups is playing Purdue, Purdue again in Baylor or Baylor. Yeah. If, and- they, if they continue out. So I really like them to make it to the suite or to the elite eight. And by the way, 
I think Purdue, I think Purdue can beat Baylor and Baylor. I agree. I agree. Again, I mean, I'm, the, I'm really the, not the trying the size that the size that Purdue has there. Sure. I think match up, match ups pretty well against Baylor. And it's just like, yeah. Uh, Buckeye Zach says the regional is pretty favorable to get to the final four. And yeah, I think some people were maybe, you know, you know, Baylor by many was considered the second best team in, in basketball this year. And again, they're maybe not as battle tested playing in the big 12 as Ohio state is playing in the big 10, but mm-hmm. some people were concerned. Well, what's Ohio state doing? Are there, are there really the third best number two seed? Is that true? Because, you know, if they beat Illinois, you could have made the argument that they deserve the number one seed. Now, I don't think you're going to win that argument, but you could have made it. I don't think you're going to win that argument. Okay. But I think you could have made that argument. Yeah. I think Ohio State was, I think the second Ohio State beat Purdue, they were just a number two seed, period. Agreed. Completely. I actually, but, I, I think but, even after they beat Minnesota, they were in all likelihood a number two seed. And then once they beat Purdue, it just to me, it became no question. Okay. Ohio State's a number two seed now, period, done, over. So why, why, why would you pair Ohio State, a team that, had they beat Illinois, you could have at least made the argument that they belonged in the number one seed. Well, look, look at the way they have the, the Big Ten teams spaced out. Yeah. So, yep. Um, if we're going in order here, so Illinois is the third number one and Michigan's the number four number one seed. And then looping back around, then Ohio State is the third number two and Iowa's the fourth number two team. Yeah, so basically there is, and this isn't a surprise to half, anyone. Half of your half of your one and two seeds are Big Ten teams, and and they spread them out. Yep. There there are two number one seeds from the Big Ten. There are two number two seeds from the Big Ten, and none of them share a bracket. Yes, and that, that, that to me was intentional. Yes, that was absolutely intentional. And by the way, makes it in the grand scheme of all of the things that are realistic in an NCAA tournament then a lot of wild things can happen. It's possible. Kyle, is it, is it possible? Should I say it out loud? Should I say it out loud? All big 10 final four (laughs) possible. Uh, It's not likely. Let's, let's just get that. It's it's not, it's not at all likely, not at all likely, but but possible. mm. I'm really disappointed. I was hoping a certain team in green and white was going to be in the same bracket as as the team up north. Yeah, that didn't. Which I know they're in the first four, so they're actually not in this graphic for that reason. Which uh, uh, they are in the east. They are in the east. Is is where they're at. Um, so. You're, t- you're talking about Michigan or Michigan state. Mich- oh no. I was talking about Ohio. <laughs> oh, I thought you were that trying to set up team. Michigan, Michigan state. <laughs> I was talking about Ohio. That's a different know, team in green and white. Yes. You know, you know, the, the team that um, beat them in the tournament a few years ago, you know? Yes. Stuart. I got there eventually. I got there. <laughs> I was just, I, I was feeling a little slow, feeling a little slow this weekend. It's all good. All right, Kyle, let's uh I don't want to get too much deep in too much deeper into the bracket. I want to keep talking about the bracket. So, but let's save a little bit of that. Let's save a little bit of that. And first, let's let's uh hear from our sponsors. Uh I would told you I was going to tell you a little bit more about some of the other spices over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, and guess what? I'm here to do just that. Uh the Mad Canadian is, you know, if you're looking at some spices and maybe you're just trying to 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 bulk up your spice collection, then what you need to what you need uh, is maybe some of his uh, value packs. He's got these box sets that can help you sort of get going uh, with your collection if you don't have any mad Canadian spices or you know maybe you know it's it's March now, but maybe a little too late to talk about New Year's resolutions or whatever. But if you're trying to cook a little bit more for yourself, if you've been eating too much DoorDash and all of that stuff, trying to cook for yourself a little bit more, um, the starter pack to me, the quintessential starter pack is the just send it box. The just send it box comes with the S and P bud, the Sonoran heat, the Cajun, 
and the smoked, which is his four most versatile spices. If you're someone who's just getting into cooking and like I said, you're just trying to maybe build up your first collection of spices. So you need some spices. They're incredibly versatile. This is your versatility pack. It's called the Just Send It. Now let's talk about it. You got the S&P bud. It's salt and pepper, but believe me, it doesn't stop there. All right. It doesn't, it's not, it's not literally just salt and pepper in a bottle. That's, that's, that's where you start, but it goes far beyond that. I promise. Uh, the S and P bud, I like to call the potato cheat code, whatever your potato is, whatever kind of potato it is, no matter how you're cooking it, it, it's going to be improved by the S and P bud promise. Uh, the Sonoran heat is a slightly spicy sort of seasoning salt. Uh, again, super versatile chicken, beef, pork, uh, I, I like to put it in my V8. I, I think that's another excellent use of the Sonoran heat. Uh, it's, again, it's just sort of those, I don't know what to do. You reach for the Sonoran heat. I want something, I want to make this a little bit spicy. Reach for the Sonoran heat. The Cajun, I think we all know what Cajun is at this point, right? Uh, it's It's fantastic to put, I think, on anything that's cheesy. So you got some mac and cheese, but you want to add a little, you want to make it a little bit more... Uh, I was going to use the word sophisticated. Can we make sophisticated mac and cheese? Is that a thing? I don't know. But if you're just trying to maybe take your your mac and cheese game up a level, I, I think the Cajun's a great go for that. Um, I think if you're doing something with cheese and potato, I think you go with the Cajun on that. Uh, I made a ham soup uh, in January, and I used a bunch of Cajun in that. It was great. Uh, and then the smoked, which is just, again, it's kind of like the Sonoran Heat in that it's incredibly versatile. This one adds a bit of a smoky flavor to it and without having to stick it on a grill for, for 10 hours. So that that's that's the Just Send It pack. I highly recommend it. And it you get it at a discount because it comes in a gift box. And you also can still get 10% off using the promo code SLOOPCAST10. You can find that at themadcanadianbbq.com. Again, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order on top of the discount that you get for it being in the gift box to begin with. And again, uh, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Mentioned a few of their their amazing coffee choices, um, much more if you go check out ironbeecoffee.com. But um, something that we don't really say too much, I think we've mentioned it a few times, um, kind of like what the Mad Canadian has done, like you got the whole hog, you can get one of each seasoning. They have a, they have a sampler package, which they have labeled the whole shebang sampler. It has, uh, they come in two and a half ounce packets and there are a total of 12 um, coffee coffees from there, from the Fear No Evil to the Odin to the Thor, the Ride and Die, Cast Iron, and the Loki, and all in between there. Uh, it's it's a great great package for your coffee lover in your life. Uh, some other things too that they have here is um, they have like flavored coffee too. I don't think we really cover too much as well. Uh, some of the options they have here is the intense blueberry. That sounds that sounds really good. The mint chocolate chip and mom's carrot cake. Who can't go? You can't go wrong with mom's carrot cake mm-hmm. at all. Oh, and the the unicorn right now, Jared. Salted caramel mocha. Ooh, I like a salted caramel coffee. I'm not huge into flavored coffees, but when I am, it's a salted caramel coffee. Mm, that's not that sounds good as well. Um, check out all of those and much much more again over at ironbeancoffee.com again that is ironbeancoffee.com america's local coffee roaster what one thing one thing that um one of our didn't put it into our um live chat here because he's not a um a sloop cat yet but i definitely want to mention this here uh ohio state's um opponent oral roberts does not have a guy over six foot to eight. Yes. Which would be really nice if if Kyle Young can't go, and that will be really helpful for EJ. EJ is and, 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 and more guy on the court. And more importantly, they have five days of rest. They don't get to play until Friday. That's it's it's uh that's a huge that's a huge get for Ohio State, just being able to chill for five days. EJ Liddell needs to spend all of that just 
getting his body ready, whether it be the ice bath, <laughs> the, the ice baths, the masseuses. I don't believe in acupuncture, but sure, let's give it a shot. Like whatever you got, doesn't matter. Let's let's get it. Let's get him going again. Um, you know, mm-hmm. let's get let's get Arns. Like Arns has to live in the gym. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Nomad brings up a point. Uh, we're doing a a sloop cast bracket this year. Uh, you have to join the Discord to get in. He does say that the group name is the Sloop Cats, but if you want the password, you're gonna have to join the Discord. And by the way, that's that's not behind like our. We have a premium section of the Discord. You do not have to join the Discord for free. Join the bracket thing for free. The bracket information to play along in our brackets is not behind the paywall. Anyone can do it. So I just want to point that out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, what was I talking about before that? I, I got uh, lost. We're, we're going to go back into the, into the brackets here. I feel um, like I was making a point before Nomad threw me off. Thanks Nomad. Um, <laughs> no. in, all, in all honesty, thanks Nomad. He's running the entire bracket. So I appreciate him. <laughs> it's just uh, one less thing just- that I have to do. Toughest bracket, I think. I actually think it's the East, the one that Michigan's in. I mean, they they play the who is it? They play the winner of uh, who is it here? Mount St. Mary and Texas Southern. But then, if if they win that game, which they should, they get to play LS, LSU or Saint Bonaventure. And they are very physical teams. I, I did watch a little bit of the St. Bonaventure game uh, before their Ohio State game uh, came on Sunday. Boy, they, they'll give Michigan a run for their money there. So if you if you have Michigan running deep, you, you might want to you might want to think back on that. <laughs> Kyle calling for a nine over one upset. Uh, it could be. It could I, be really. Are, but are you going to be bold enough to actually put it in your bracket? Is the question. Well, you're gonna. You'll find out. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, Nomad. Uh, can I get confirmation? Which individual? We did a bracket just for the Big Ten tournament. Uh, what individual won the Big Ten tournament? Can I? Can I get a confirmation on that? I think I know the answer. I think I know the answer. Can nope, I, get a I, think, I think. Oh, I think did I win it? Oh my goodness. I want it. But you hate Ohio State, though. I don't. I just I just didn't think they were going to beat Illinois. And that doesn't mean I hate them. I was cheering for them. i much rather Ohio State had won the Big Ten. All right. I, I, pr- I promised Stuart that I was going to um, give you shit about that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to be here just staring at you, just Listen, giving you shit. I'm sorry if I was right. I, I don't get to be right all that often. Hey. Okay. Any, any any sloop cats that's listening, mm-hmm. this is why you join. This is why you join Team Scarlet. How dare you? How this is why you, you join Team Scarlet. Team Gray. Team Gray. They did team did Team Scarlet or Team Gray win as a as teams because we divided ourselves into teams for the Big Ten tournament brackets. Which team won? And like there was a lot of shenanigans with y'all. Oh, Gray won that too, huh? Wow. Wow, it, 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 huh. unlike unlike your your um your 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 picks here, your sloop picks. I'm sorry. Who's the reigning sloop pick champion? I think that's me. Also, wow, <laughs> wow. How about that? It's almost like I've killed my demons. Hmm. I'm, I, and you know what, Kyle, I'm going to, I'm going to win the sloop cat bracket too. All right. I'm going to win the sloop cat bracket. I, and if I don't win it, I'm at least going to do better than you. Mm-hmm. One thing interesting. <laughs> one thing, one thing, that's just one a thing very low key mm-hmm, 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 from Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, one thing interesting. Shut up, I, Jared, I want to talk the, about from, actual basketball now. One thing I found interesting from the selection show is the play in for the 11 11 in the east in the east um bracket sparty in the bruins you got two blue bloods who have not had the the greatest of years but you still have two blue blood basketball teams going at it for a play in that, that's really interesting there to me at least yeah i mean you have wisconsin playing north carolina in the first round 
Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start ragging on a lot of, um, um, Wisconsin, colleagues about Wisconsin that. didn't end the season all that great. So I, I, I'd maybe not go all in on the Badgers right now. They looked a lot better uh, during the season. Does, they does, did does it the doesn't mean I can't, I can't, um, rag on my colleagues. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't, don't go all, don't, don't put all your baskets. Don't put all your eggs in the Wisconsin basket. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Especially since you might, I, I mean, I don't think they get past, I don't think either of them get past Baylor for what it's worth, but you know, you got Purdue right there. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think, all right, let's look at the South bracket. That's where Ohio state is. Let's start there. Yep. Who do you think realistically wins this? Pick a couple teams. A couple teams. I th- I th- easily Baylor and Ohio state. I think easily those, those are your sure. They're, they're your one and twos. You're your one and two. Yep. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, but I think there's a big separation from Ohio State and Baylor to, let's say, they're number three, Arkansas, and then four, Purdue. Now, I actually think Purdue is better than Arkansas. I agree. So I'd probably put Purdue at that right there at that next slot and then the next slot. And then the field there. Yeah, I, just, I, I agree. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying Arkansas is bad. Okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to be the guy that just says, oh, they're SEC bad. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that, but I, I don't, as far as being of the number three seeds, I don't find them overly intimidating. Uh, West Virginia I, 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 is I, I, a much better number three seed. Texas is, I I mean, they just won the Big Twelve tournament, um, yeah. and not not that I think Texas is all that strong, but and then you have Kansas, who you know wasn't capital K Kansas this year, but still a, a solid basketball team. Um, I think if you had to get matched up with a number three, if you're Ohio State and you had to get matched up with a number three, I think Arkansas is a pretty good pull. Mm-hmm. You could yeah, I mean, easily make I'm the going, argument you- that they're the weakest number three. Yeah, I mean teams that I'm glad Ohio State does not have to play right now. Virginia, mm-hmm. Kansas, West Virginia, West Virginia, Iowa. Yeah, LSU's playing some really good basketball. Uh, Texas, uh, Houston, Oklahoma State has a very good player. Yeah, <laughs> on that team, I'm glad Ohio State does not have to play I, Oklahoma state in their bracket there. They, they could in the final four. Maybe. I think what we're saying here though, is that it's, it's a, fa- a very, it's, fa- a- it's a very favorable, favorable bracket. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, you know, and Baylor's good. Baylor's very good. Uh, yeah. I don't, don't want to suggest otherwise. I, you know, I think they're probably, I would personally, I, I'd rather play, Baylor than Gonzaga. I'd rather play Baylor than Illinois again. Um, I would rather play Michigan again. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that they're the third, they're the third best, or at least from an Ohio State matchup standpoint. I want to say specifically from the frame of Ohio State having to play them. I'd say that's the not not the best option, but I would certainly say there are two options I would, I would less rather play. So yeah, I, it's, I think it's a great, I think it's a great position for Ohio state. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely looking, which which bracket you want to look at now. Uh, And we don't have to spend as much. I think, I think the one we didn't really talk too much about was the Midwest here. The one where with Illinois is the number one seed and Houston at the number two, at the number two seed. And, Rutgers uh, comes. Rutgers comes in and makes makes the the tourney here, coming at number ten and, as a ten seed, and will be playing Clemson in their in their first round. Is, that, is it considered a first round or a second round with the play in? I, I forget how they. Officially... I think they te- technically call it the second round. Okay, because you're not allowed to call the first the first four the first four or the first round. It's not a play in. You're not allowed to call it a play in, Kyle. They are a mm-hmm. part of the tournament. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I think West Virginia. Where, where I think is. T- I, I don't. 
I, I like Houston. Don't get me wrong. They're a number two mm-hmm. seed, so I'm not I'm not trying to say otherwise. But I think West Virginia is the one that comes out of that, in my opinion, to eventually mm-hmm. play Illinois. Uh, Illinois does, as Kyle pointed out before, does not have the easiest path as they do have Oklahoma State in the way, and I think that's a team that can absolutely beat Illinois. Now, Illinois is a better team. Don't get me wrong. I think Illinois should win that game, but. Oklahoma State, if, if Illinois shows up to that game a little too flat, Oklahoma State will make them pay. I mean, I mean kind of kind of like Ohio State, Oklahoma State, they start making threes, they're going to give Illinois some trouble. But Illinois just just going to bully their way through their through their bracket here. And if and if those two meet up, I mean, just like what Jared said, if Oklahoma State just starts going cold and can't make their outside shots, their three pointers, Illinois is just going to wear them down. Just like, yeah. like they did Ohio State. So who, who do you think realistically can can win this bracket? Uh, <laughs> Loyola, Chicago. Well, <laughs> Loyola, Chicago has got to beat the ACC champion, Georgia Tech, who's in a nine seed. <laughs> and then would have to get past Illinois. And then has to get by Illinois. Yeah. Um, Doable. <laughs> no, nah, because here's the thing. They're not catching anyone by surprise this year. You yeah. get one of those. All mm-hmm. right. You get one of those. Sorry, Leola Chicago. Well, the, the, the biggest question out of there, uh, I forget her actual name, but is is the sister yeah. going to be in, in the attendance? It, probably not. I think she's probably a COVID risk. <laughs> of course, she's probably <laughs> at her age, probably already received a vaccine. Uh, but, you know, I, I would call that a COVID risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, East bracket. Kyle. Who do you think realistically can win the East? And how how much of a note are we making of Michigan State, who's got some really good wins the past few weeks? But that was had a bad loss, too. <laughs> They've had some bad losses as well. But they got a lot of good wins. Michigan State had a lot of really good wins in the at the end of the regular season. Mm-hmm. That has but, to be that has to be worth something. If you're looking for someone, it's a, this it's a coach one, it, that knows it, how to win. It's a team that knows how to win, and it's a team that is playing much better now than they were at the beginning of the year. And yeah, did they did they lose in the Big Ten? Yeah, a lot of teams lost in the Big Ten tournament. was was crazy hard. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think this one is going to be the toughest bracket to choose from because i think you could possibly say michigan you could say lsu you could say colorado don't alabama don't out georgetown i keep i heard a few people saying hey they really like that 12-5 matchup with colorado and georgetown picking georgetown there florida states uh had a really good season texas really good um don't count out alabama and yes we're talking about basketball yeah. this year that, that's that's probably the toughest i i would say that you you have a better odds of figuring out like trying to predict ohio's um weather for the week than you can um choose a winner out of this bracket yeah it, this is this is maybe the most wide open of the brackets i think michigan's the weakest number one seed you're welcome sun card <laughs> <laughs> I, I i do think michigan's the the weakest number one seed um, you know, they're still a very good team. Don't get me wrong. Um, and yeah, I think Bama's a very good number two seed. And as, as Kyle just said, I don't want to repeat everything Kyle just said. They, there are some, Texas is a pretty good number three seed. They're playing good right now. They're playing very good right now. So that's worth something. And yeah, there's, there's some blue blood oh, yeah. names. Let's not okay, forget Michigan. Michigan again, let's not forget Michigan state. We have yep. some real blue blood names who underperformed this year. Yukon, Maryland, Michigan State, Georgetown in this in this bracket. These are teams with winning cultures. And I get that they had lackluster years by their standards, but they're still coaches and programs that know how to win big games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as, a, as a total here. I think everyone everyone's always looking for like that one bracket that gets completely busted and a low seed team makes something magic happens. I think it's the East. 
I, I don't yeah. know who it is, but I think it's the East. Mm-hmm. Nine. Nine Big Ten teams make the tournament this year. Yeah. Uh, two more than the next closest. I think it was the ACC and the Big 12 who had uh, both numbers, uh, both had seven teams. All right, Kyle, uh, on to the West bracket. I'm going to ask you a slightly different question. Sure. Before I asked you who can realistically win out of this, uh, I, I said that the East was the most wide open. This is the least wide open. I would honestly be pretty surprised if it wasn't Iowa and Gonzaga in the in the Elite Eight. Yep, the, I, 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 I just too. have a hard time seeing this as anything else. Yeah. Maybe maybe Kansas could stir up something too against against Iowa. Because it's Kansas and yeah. Uh, yeah, I I mean Gonzaga and Virginia will be a really good game to watch too, but I'd I'd still give the nod to to Gonzaga in that in that sweet sixteen matchup if both teams make it there. Yeah, and you know, you have Drake and, and Wichita State uh doing, you know, they'll they're playing from that uh eleven seed. So Wichita State is a pretty good eleven seed. By eleven seed standards, they're they're pretty good. Uh, I, I just I just have a really I think Virginia's a good team. It's just I think Gonzaga is that damn good, and I think Iowa's that damn good. Agreed. Um, Agreed. For, like I said, in Virginia is one of the better four seeds. Again, I was sort of going over. You know, there's some really really good four seeds, and I think they're one of them. Uh, yep. I just I don't just have a really hard time seeing this being anything other than either Iowa or Gonzaga. Just really hard mm-hmm. seeing that. Yep. All right, Kyle, um, anything else you want to let, let's talk just about Ohio State's path real quick. Then we'll do some ask Sloopcast questions. Sure. Play Oral Roberts. Done. That's happening. Uh, then you play either Florida or Virginia Tech. Do you want to make a prediction, Florida or Virginia Tech? And I'm not going to hold you to this, by the way, because I'm just bringing this on you at the last second. And you can put something different in your bracket if you want to. Yeah, I probably I probably go with Florida. Yeah, um, it's it's easy to say they're the, they are the better seed, but I, I I agree. Yeah, absolutely. All right, from there, if you then beat Florida, but okay, so make the prediction. We make the prediction that it's going to be Florida. Does Ohio State beat Florida? Yes. Okay. So Ohio State beats Florida. Now, we have four teams to choose from. Who do you think Ohio State plays? Texas Tech, Utah State, Arkansas, or Colgate? I think they'll play Texas Tech. Can I can I say something wild? Mm-hmm. Utah State. Ooh. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm, I might change my mind. I might change yeah. my mind. I don't like Arkansas that much. I don't either. Uh, they, they still might end up. I, that being said, Ohio State still could very well end up playing Arkansas. Um, and if they do, I think of any of those four teams, of any of those four teams, is there a team that Ohio State shouldn't beat? Ohio, should Ohio State be able to? And then again, it's basketball. Yeah. Anything can happen. Injuries, yada yada yada. Is there anyone who I think is in the relative same sphere as Ohio State? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think I think I Ohio think so State has a. I think Ohio State has a really. Cl- I don't want to say clear, but they have no. a really good shot of making it to that elite eight because like I mentioned before, looking at these number, other number three seeds, they don't play Kansas. They don't play Texas. They don't play West Virginia who are yeah. all three seats. Those would be a lot tougher than Arkansas that Ohio state is in. With. There's a lot of number four seats. I think we already mentioned like Virginia and West Virginia, or excuse me, West Virginia is a number three. Um, but there's a lot of four seeds who I like a lot more than Arkansas. Uh, Oklahoma State, I think, is a team you were talking about. Purdue, I, th- I, I, I like these teams more than I like Arkansas. So I, I think Ohio in State. Virginia. In Virginia. I, thought, I, I think I said that, but that's, a, that's okay. Um, okay. I may not have. You said West Virginia, but either way. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like both, them in the, but, in the Elite Eight there. 
I think it's the expect. I want to say I don't just like it. I think that's the expectation. Mm -hmm. I think it is the expectation that Ohio State and makes the Elite Eight. Kind of going back two months ago when Ohio State was on a really hot streak and like, this could be a Final Four team. Well, looking now, they have a really good shot at making to that Elite Eight and getting a shot to play in a Final Four matchup. Yeah. I, they, I think, have... I think the expectation at this point is Elite Eight. And again, it, it as Kyle it, just it, said, I don't want to say a clear path. I don't want to say that. But they, as, as far as the NCAA tournament is, is concerned, by those standards, I think they have a, a very realistic path, path to the Elite Eight. And I think that it's, it's, if you had to pick a number one seed for them to play from a matchup standpoint, I don't think Baylor's a bad matchup. No, I, I, I think, think I think so. Baylor is better than Ohio State, and I think Baylor wins if they played seven games. I think Baylor wins over Ohio State in a seven-game playoff. But it's not a seven-game playoff. It's a one-game playoff. So Ohio State can win that game, and Ohio State can make the Final Four. I don't, I'm not saying that the Final Four is the expectation. I think the Elite Eight is the expectation. Mm-hmm. But and if Ohio what, State does that, they're going to have to learn to finish and not let Minnesota's back in the game late. Yeah, not let but, Purdue's I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, right back now, in like the game late. Uh, Dwayne Washington, just on a really hot streak right now, um, 16 points, 20 points, 24 points, 32 in their recent game against Illinois. They're finding some rhythm. Washington's finding some rhythm right now. He's killing and, it. Yeah, I... I really like how how state's offense is rolling right now. Uh, shooting percentage, uh, 60% against Illinois. Uh, oh, nope, I'm looking at the wrong one. 57% against Illinois, 45 against Michigan, 41 against Purdue, 66 against Minnesota. So he's right at like 50% shooting. So pretty good, pretty good as a, um, as a guard. All right, Kyle. Um, we're going to have to move through the ask sloop cast questions quickly. We're, we're all pretty much out of time. So, mm -hmm. um, I, can we limit this to just basketball questions? Out yeah. Of that's respect? kind of what I'm thinking here. So apologies for anybody who asked any football Feel, questions here. If, I know, if you I know, asked a really good question that wasn't basketball related, uh, just ask it again. I yeah. seriously like copy and paste it, ask it again. And we'll get it next time. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just scrolling down here. No, we were going to skip. We were already going to skip the baseball questions. No, man, we, we don't know anything <laughs> about baseball. Stop. Stop trying to make baseball happen. Uh, Stuart wants to know, Jared, is daylight savings time weather? What? No. First, first, no. <laughs> time is not. No. And second, that's not a basketball question. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> ah, a lot of. A lot of, a lot of questions. <laughs> well, this one, this one, this one, this one going right to you from Stuart as well. If you didn't choose Ohio State to win the Big Ten tournament, are you truly an Ohio State fan? I, yes. It's not my job as a commentator to make you feel good. It's not my job. It's my job to form an educated opinion and share it. Now, how, how educated is it? I try. Is it, I, I try, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not here to make you feel good. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions about Team Scarlet and Team Gray. Like we we kind of said that as a joke at the end of last week's podcast, but it's 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 become a thing because Team Scarlet can go poop themselves. I, I I almost went with a hard curse there, and I stopped myself, and I'm not sure why, um, but I did. Hmm. Because Team Scarlet's the team, superior team. Though. Team Team Gray for life. Team Gray for life. Team Scarlet, though. Team Gray for life. Team Team Gray's undefeated. We took home both the individual championship, and and Kyle the team championship. Okay, well, we're about we're about to redeem ourselves in the bracket. All new teams for the bracket challenge. Y'all hey, hey, can hey, do whatever hey, you no, want. I'm Team Gray for life. Hey, hey Nomad, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna. I'm going to make sure that teams are even, wink, wink. 
moving forward. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but Team Gray for life. Stack, stack the cards against me. Come get some. Come get it. <laughs> uh, any questions in, in the chat here? Uh, uh, most of these were basketball here. Um, oh, here, here, here's a question. Are college basketball players allowed to declare view draft status and withdraw declaration and re-enter college? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yep. I Ohio, actually, State's, Ohio State's done that. Former Ohio State players have done that in the past too. Well, and the fact that football players are now allowed to do that, now that the football players actually have some leniency to enter the draft and come back out if they meet certain qualifications and rejoin the college football team, that's all based off of basketball. Basketball had those leniency rules and football adopted them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those are all, um, th- those new rules in football were were pioneered in basketball. Yeah. And then Nomad continues, should EJL think about coming back if he isn't a high mid first round? I think he is though. I think he's a, he's a mid, I don't know. I haven't looked at like, I haven't either. I, NBA, I haven't either. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's, I think he's gone. Just EJ Liddell's gone. I think it's just whatever it is. I think he's gone. Uh, any other questions that you see there, Jared? Um, no, I think it's, I think we should just move on. I think we should just move on. Um, sorry about that. I know we actually end up doing a lot of sloop cast questions most of the time, but we had four basketball games and a, and a, and a bracket to cover. So apologies for that. Again, if you asked a non-basketball question, go ahead and just copy and paste that back and ask Sloopcast and we'll get you next time. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuart does ask why, cause he and I were the only two. I want to, I want to point this out. Uh, Stuart E4 US vet uh, asked, uh, asks Sloopcast. Why didn't anyone have faith in Ohio State? He and I, of all the people in our in our bracket challenge, he and I were the only two that had Ohio State in the championship game. So I don't know why you think you, Kyle, have some moral high ground on me for picking Illinois to win it when you didn't even have Ohio State in the game. Please speak for yourself. Please defend yourself both for not putting Ohio State in that game and, Kyle, and for being a hypocrite and criticizing me for picking Illinois to win the game when you didn't even have them playing in it. Hey, it doesn't fit my narrative. (laughs) (laughs) Well, asked and answered. (laughs) Uh, I I think that's it. I think that's it. We'll... uh, Spring camp, spring camp's right around the corner here. Speaking of steam, team, Car- oh wow! Speaking of team Scarlet and team Gray, I think you and I, at some point, we'll have to fit fit it in uh, before the spring game happens. We're gonna have to draft our own spring teams. Okay, we'll we'll do a team Scarlet and a team Gray. You and I are gonna draft. We're, we're going to draft it. What do you think about that? I'm I'm game. All right. I'm game for that. So we're going to do that at some point. Probably just depends upon how much time basketball is taking up and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, we're going to do that. All right. Just be forewarned. We're going to do that. All right. All right. I think, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and end. That's my line. Well, I wasn't doing it though. Was I? That's it. That's it for today's show. I want to thank everyone for for stopping by, for listening, for watching, whatever, however you're doing this, especially if you're watching this episode, because it's going to be about it's this is a basketball centric podcast and that's going to be that in the title and it's going to be that in the thumbnail. And these episodes don't do as well. So if you actually uh, came by, know, know that you're the real heroes here. You're the real heroes here. You saw basketball in the thumbnail. You saw the fact that it was named with a episode title that was something basketball related and you still showed up. You're the real heroes here. Yes. Uh, come join our bracket challenge. Just join the discord. You, you don't yeah. have to just, just come, come to the discord and join our bracket challenge. Mm-hmm. You're the real heroes here. Um, check out the sloopcast.com. 
uh, thesloopcast.com. You can find links to all of our stuff, including merch stores, including um, a lot of stuff. Just, just there's a lot of stuff. Links to our podcast pages and to our YouTube pages, our merch stores, our social pages, the Discord, the Patreon. Uh, lots of cool stuff. We got an oh, all right, yeah. I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, and Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, just one thing. Um, wasn't really noteworthy, but I'll put it in this corner. Um, son of legend, Buckeye legend, Orlando Pace, his son has decided to commit to Ohio State as a preferred walk on. Yeah, that's right. We got a new pace. I don't believe he's an offensive lineman, though, is he? Isn't he? Is he not a? Uh... Do you not know? I I, don't I think, think I saw he, a picture of him, and he... I think he looked a little too skinny. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Um, want to uh before we end today. By the way, anyone in the first person that does it, first person in the Sloopcast live chat, uh, can pick the band. Yeah, if he Nomad says if he is, he's the smallest lineman ever signed by Ohio State. I think he's a wide receiver. I forget though. Nope. He's a 195 pound outside linebacker. Y- yeah. And he's also paid he also he also played a little bit of tight end. So could he be part of the year of the tight end? Not not at 195 pounds, he's not. <laughs> God, he needs to eat some pancakes. Yes, yes, he does. <laughs> Full natural sugar syrup. Uh, speaking of patrons, uh, Hardy Jens joined the Sleep Cats over on our Patreon page. So want to give a shout out to Welcome. Uh, his name on page. I see what his actual name is in the in his email address. I don't know if he wants that shared or not. His his Patreon name is Hardy Jens. So I will, I will call I will call them hearty gens uh so thank you for for joining us and uh if you haven't already stop by the discord and and come pick up some of your premium access and uh with all but anyone music anyone in the chat music anyone anyone come on I'm, I'm looking nothing we got nothing oh my goodness you guys nothing i'm watching i'm watching no one's typing. Oh, oh, we got a typer. Oh, we got Stuart. Stuart's typing. Come on. Come on, guys. Do my job for me. <laughs> Come on. What happened? Oh, north of north to Nashville. Uh, yeah, I think you brought them up, but I forgot to write it down. Um, That's a former Ohio State players band, right? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, who, who's the Ohio State player? Do you remember, Stuart? I don't know if they're an Ohio band or not, but it's a former Ohio State player. So if it's not, I'm giving it a pass. You don't. Okay. Uh, y'all can Google it for yourself. How about that? The name of the band is North to Nashville. I don't know what song it's going to be yet because I don't even know if this is going to be any good or not. How about that? I don't know who this band is, but I, I do know that uh, one of the members is not a former Ohio State football player. I don't think he was a particularly notable one because <laughs> I don't know who I could be wrong about that. This is I'm working completely off of advice from Stuart. So if this music's bad, blame him. And with all of that being said, I'd like to. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine, by the way. I'm honestly sure it's fine. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is North to Nashville. What's up, Discord? What's up, YouTube? Of course, if you're listening on the YouTube version, if you're watching this on the YouTube version, you don't even hear the music. So this is all of this. I was looking at the name. I was looking at the names here, and I don't recognize. I I don't think he was a particularly notable player, whomever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're 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 going for it, because why not? Um. He, he can't be from like they can't be from Ohio because you wouldn't go north to Nashville. If it was south to Nashville, of course that's formed, that's just formed in Columbus, Ohio oh. in 2018. Really? They really they really should be south to Nashville then. They became the featured band on the radio station 97.1. Yeah. 
hey, there you go. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's the sports station, though. It is. That's that's our local ESPN affiliate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stuart says he has DM'd me. I don't know what that means. He's sliding into my DMs. I I I hope I hope they're not they're not pictures, are they? Stuart, what are, what are you sending into my DMs, Stuart? By the by the way, for your ad read, Jared, check the very bottom. We'll do the show notes. We'll do. All right. All right. Uh, let's uh let's rejoin our audio listeners. The very, very bottom? Ah. Very, very bottom. Okay. I'd like to once again thank North to Nashville for ending today's show. And once again, I'd like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's show. Kyle, did you know that the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company isn't just a spice company? They also have a barbecue bus. You can check out Mad Canadian social media pages to see where that barbecue bus is going to be next. Uh, on Twitter, for example, he's at TMCBBQ. Uh, you can uh, this March 17th and 19th. Uh, they're going to be in Cary for uh, from 4 to 8, uh, with Friday being Fish Taco Night. I assume the 19th is, is Friday? Yes, it is. Yeah, they're out three times this week. Uh, he says three times, but oh yeah, and then March so on second Wednesday, on Wednesday the seventeenth. They're going to be at North and Patterson in Cary, Ohio, four to eight o'clock. I'm not sure if that's also on the nineteenth, but check out his social media for that. And then on Sunday, he'll be at the Wyandotte County Fair from noon to four. That says three two. Did he mean to say three twenty? It's supposed to be three. Yeah. Okay. That, that's where I was getting confused. <laughs> that's, that's, I was like, wait a minute. That's, that's the past. All right. Three times this week. Um, he'll, uh, the 17th and 19th will be in Cary at the place Kyle just said, uh, with Friday, he'll also have fish tacos. And on Sunday, the 20th, he'll be at the Wyand- Wyandotte County Fairgrounds. Uh, he'll be there from 12 to 4. Uh, he wants you to know. So if you're in or near Cary or the Wyandotte County Fairgrounds, go ahead and uh, stop by and uh, say hi. Tell him the Sloopcast sent you and uh, pull on his beard. Don't 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 pull on his beard. He doesn't like that. <laughs> and if you, if you do pull on his beard, don't tell him I told you to do it. In fact, just don't pull on it. Guys, we're in COVID times. We shouldn't be like, generally speaking, we shouldn't be touching people like just as a courtesy, but also it's COVID times and you really shouldn't be touching people. So like, let's double down on not just touching people. I like how I'm telling people not to touch people right after I told them to touch people. Uh, If you can't make it to either of those locations, you can, of course, check out his amazing spices at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. I talked about a few of these spices. Let's talk about a couple of the ones I didn't talk about. You have the Four Horsemen and the Discord. These are both uh, incredibly spicy four pepper blends. Uh, The difference here being that the Discord has a bit of a sweeter base and the Four Horsemen has a bit of a saltier base. So use those appropriately uh, as necessary. Uh, There's also the Oak, which is smoked ranch. I I don't think you need any further explanation than that. It's, it's, it's smoked ranch. How could you go wrong? And then there's the Mad Hatter, which is kind of a spicy citrus salt. I think it'd be great for margaritas. I've not used it for that. I typically use it on chicken. That That's my go-to for the, for the Mad Hatter. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I roll. Uh, so like I said, you can find all that at madcanadianbbq.com. That's Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where it has your butt covered. Sloopcast10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Once again, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where it has your butt covered. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I think a few of us, a few people in our Discord mentioned about the, what they call the murder coffee. 
Uh, so they have they have uh, five bags here on ironbeancoffee.com that they have labeled as Murder Coffee Company. So let me let me go over some of those because some of them are excited to get their their bag of murder coffee. First one on the list here is the Serial Killer, which is a vanilla buttercream. Uh, they said that here that it tastes like a perfect murder. <laughs> it's um, let's see here. It says it's you. It's USDA certified organic and fair trade, just like all their other beans. Um, it's Brazilian beans, um, low in acidity. The next one here they have is the Solus, which is a ginger snap. Ooh. The third one here they call the Stay Awake, which is a murderously caffeinated. Ooh, I got to check what that one is. Uh, that one says it is a dark roast coffee made um, m- made to give you the morning or late night boost you need to stay alive. It tastes <laughs> bold. Notes of chocolate with a hint of vanilla and walnut. It says this blend is not for the virgin tongue. Uh, the fourth one here they have is called the bloodbath. It's a red velvet cake. Oh. And then the and then the fifth one here they have they have is called the turning blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble. By the way, when I, I've I've read those before, I'm pretty sure that blueberry crumble was what I had when I got my unicorn bag. And mm-hmm. if that's true, it's very good. I'm sure it's yeah. very good regardless. But I think I've had that one because I think I got when I got my unicorn bag a couple months back, I think it was that one. Yeah, they said they said that one, it's roasted to perfection with notes of blueberry and cinnamon. Yeah, because it kind of kind of reminded me of like a blueberry muffin is what it reminded me of. And that that sounds pretty close. That does. That sounds really good. Check out those and much, much, much more over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. 